An additional $250 uh, put into the building fund. Amen. Uh, praise God. Come on, give the Lord a clap uh, off for that. Uh, Sister Debbie, I want to thank you. And Brother Francis, man. We want to thank you very much. Amen. Praise God. That is an awesome thing. How many know God is has $250 towards the $250,000? Come on. Amen. Praise God. And we want to do not only some remodeling, we want to do some rebuilding. Praise God. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Um, in the Bible, in the, how many of those kids read the Bible? How many believe you read the Bible? Come on, amen. Um, in, in the first chapter of the book of Matthew, around the 18th verse, part of the Christmas story, I want to share it with you uh, for a second. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. Uh, how many know that when you're instructing somebody to do something, when you're giving directions, when you're teaching them, you know, and you hear it here, now this is the birth of Jesus Christ, and it was as follows. In other words, this is the way it took place. This is the way it happened. Amen. There was no doubt or no accident involved here. It says, after his mother Mary was betrothed to, Je to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, how many know it would be a good thing to be a just man? And wa not wanting to make her a public example, was mindful to put her away secretly. Now, you know, you might be saying, what the heck has this got to do with offerings? You know, um, but just think about it for a second. We know that the child was a, the greatest gift, if you must, that could ever been given to mankind. I mean, it's uh, paved the way to the cross for salvation, for deliverance, for healing, for freedom. Come on, amen, uh, for a love that, that we never could truly have as human beings without Christ in our life. But there's two things that always jump out at me, and I, and I believe it pertains it fits real well with giving this morning our tithes and offering. You know, Mary and Joseph were just two young kids. They were engaged to get married. And how many know that in those days in the tradition, their engagement went on for like a year? Come on, yeah. amen. And they were engaged, and the Bible says it te teaches us that they were they were Christians. Amen. They did what was right. They weren't having, let's try it out for a year. If you know what I mean? Come on, amen. They weren't living together. They were doing things the right way. And I like this because in, it says that Mary she was betrothed to Joseph before she came together. She was found with child by the Holy Spirit. Now think about that for a second. Can you imagine what, what is going through her mind? Can you imagine how do I tell him? How do I tell my mom? How do I tell my dad? How do I tell the community I'm pregnant by the, God said I'm pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And it says Joseph being a just man, he didn't want to put her, he, he didn't want to put her away publicly because that was tr the tradition, amen, to make a spectacle of. He said he would put her away secretly and was still going to put her away, amen, but then God spoke to them. So I, I say this to you this morning as we're getting ready to give our tithes and offering for one reason and one reason alone. You see character of a man and woman of God in this story. And how many know that in our giving to God, it takes character? Come on, amen. You have to have godly character, amen, to want to do what is right, what God asks us to do, what God calls us to do. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. See, it's easy. We could say and be like Joseph, well, I'm going to put her away secretly, and that wasn't what God wanted him to do. See, we could say, well, God, I'm going to only give you this much or I'm not going to give you for this reason and for that reason. But how many know that's not what God wants? Right. Come on, amen. See, he took character, godly character, could, took discipline in his life. It took obedience in their lives to listen to God, to listen to the word, to follow the directions, if you must, of the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen this morning? See, there's something when you're willing to say, God, here I am, speak to me, Lord, and I'm going to follow. I'm going to do it, Lord. It might be difficult. I might have a need that I created that I shouldn't have, but it's still there and it's real. It might be a need that just came about. Your refrigerator just stopped being a refrigerator, amen. Now it's almost, you know, it's just not doing what it's supposed to do. But how many know there's something about having the character of God in your life? 
There's something about listening to the Holy Spirit. Come on, church. Amen. There's something about saying, God, here I am. Use me. Come on this morning. Well, how many know that we can't let God use us in our finances? You're going to have a real difficult time letting him use you in anything else. Because when you're half-hearted, you're half-hearted all the way. But I encourage you this morning, amen, be who God has called you to be in every, every area of your life, including your releasing of your tithes and your offerings to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to ask a little way right here to give the prayer for me this morning. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, we come before you throne this morning, Father God. Yes, we do. Lord, thanking you, Father God, for what you've done on the cross, Father God. Lord, this morning, as we release our tithes and our offerings, Father God, as you have gave your son freely, Father God, we give back to your kingdom, Father God, in your house with a grateful heart, Father God, for what you've done in our lives. We thank you and we love you this morning. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Church, I guess. 
And I remember the little white guy was talking to me about, fi about finances and tithing, and I don't know how the subject came up. He said, how much money would you like to earn? I just said something really simple and easy, double. Right? Raise your hand if you want to make double what you earn right now. That's what I said. I said double. He said, pay tithe on the double. I thought he lost his mind. I, I, I almost said to him, I smoke weed and you don't. What is wrong with you? I remember I was, we were, I was 19 years old. We were really young. And Sister Dee Dee and I were there. We were really young. People said some really strange things to us in that church. One time somebody told us we were unequally yoked. Because she white and I'm wow. dark, dark, side of, dark side of the moon, as Pink Floyd would say. Um, but I did something. Come on, it was really crazy. I tried God. The Bible says, this is what God's word said, prove me. Amen. That's what God said, prove me, prove me. That's like somebody telling you, I dare you. And you know the worst one that I dare you, right? <laughs> double dog, no, that's actually triple, that's for, I double dare you is worse than I dare you. But I double dog dare you, I don't know where I ever came from. <laughs> But the reality that God doesn't have the ability to bless, that he has the ability. The reason he can't is because we won't operate by faith. If you walk by faith, not by sight, God will blow your mind. You won't be able to take credit for it. You won't be able to say, well, it's because I went and got my PhD and my ABCDEFG. You won't be able to say it's because my mind got healed and I'm a smarter person now. <laughs> What you will be able to say is, I don't know how God does it, but he honors his word. And God does exactly what he says he will do. It's amazing. We'll lay hands on people wanting a miracle. We'll lay hands on them if they're battling through cancer, leukemia, if they're sick in their body, if, they're, if their legs mess up, if their lungs are troubled, if their livers are bad. And we lay hands on them with no problem. Get your wallet your finances, your banks, lay hands on the table and rebuke that spirit. Let God be a blessing in your holy do it. That's none of you. That's none of your business. But I do want to thank Sister Dell. Great idea. Those who helped you, man. God, God bless you. I don't know if they need this. It looks like it's got some notes on there. Robert, hand that to somebody more important than me back there. Hallelujah. Did you bring your Bible with you this morning? Open your Bibles, if you can, to the book of Matthew. So, we are in the month of December. And this is the month that we, that we celebrate the birth of Christ. Jesus is the reason for the season. Can the church say amen? You read the story of the birth of Christ. And you read the story of the Magi. The, the, the shepherd, the... Uh, uh, the wise men who came to visit the Lord Jesus Christ. The words that the angel, I'm not going to go through them because there's, there's, I'm using this kind of as a platform. The words that they use of this child that is born who will be, be the Prince of Peace. And that's what I've titled my message. I've titled this the Prince of Peace. This is the season that we celebrate and we focus and we worship and we acknowledge and we remember that this is the season that we celebrate the birth of a Savior. Amen. And he and he is, and he was when he was born, the Prince of Peace. But in Matthew chapter 10, the Lord Jesus himself says something that, that kind of sends what preachers would say is a whirlwind on your thinking. You know, when you figure that you, when you kind of think you've figured something out and you're okay with it, and all of a sudden something happened to you, and you go, no, I don't even know what anything is anymore. So I'm going to read you. I'm going to go to Matthew chapter number 10. Now, in Matthew chapter number 10, this is the part, this is the point where Jesus is uh, sending out the disciples that are with him. He's sending them out. He's releasing them to do what God has called them to do, and that is to be fruitful. Yes. Say amen. amen. The same thing that Jesus put on those uh, that left, those disciples, in his releasing is the same thing that God has put on you and I. His desire is that we would be fruitful. Yes. That doesn't mean having a bunch of children. 
That means winning people to Christ. That means bringing them to the cross, bringing them to the loving and the, and the, and the incredible knowledge of knowing Christ as Savior. It goes all the way back to the beginning when God created Adam and Eve. He put them in the garden and he told them to be fruitful and multiply. Now naturally that fit in a different category there because God was filling the earth and, and, it, and it meant that there. But for us, the desire of God is that our lives still be fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Jesus said it himself. So when he sent out the disciples, when he sent out these 12 men, when he sent them out, he gave them some incredible words of wisdom. He, he talked about them not, not being afraid of those who may threaten them. He talked to them about the student is not greater than the teacher and the teacher not greater than the student. He talked to them about things like a brother might, is probably going to betray uh, uh, another brother. He, these casualties and these difficulties that were going to happen in the ministry. I want you to go down to verse number 32. Jesus said, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on the earth, I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me on the earth, are you, are you reading with me? Yes, sir. If you don't have your Bible, you can look up at the screen. But everyone who denies me here on the earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So Jesus told them that if, if you ignore the fact and you don't see me as Lord and Savior and the forgive, forgiver of your sins, when you stand before God, I won't know you either. Right. But he said, if you acknowledge me, I'll acknowledge you. If you acknowledge me publicly, I'll acknowledge you when you stand before my Father in heaven on judgment day. And then verse 34 stands up. He said, don't imagine that I, that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Amen. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother. See, now we read this and we think, oh, that's easy. That's in the neighborhood here. That's, that's my family right there. Can you say amen? And a daughter-in-law and a daughter -in -law against her mother-in-law. Oh, absolutely. That fits right in there, right? No, no, it doesn't. Verse 36, your enemies will be right in your own household. Okay? What? you got to be kidding. So I want to share something with you on the Prince of Peace. Would you bow your heads with me? As, as I asked Brother Ed right there, who's staring at me because he knew I was going to pick him, would you stand, Brother Ed, and ask the Lord's blessing over this word? Father God, we just come before you this morning, Father God. Yes. Thanking you, Father God, for the word, Father God, that you gave to our pastor, Father God. Lord, we ask, Father God, that you open our eyes, Father God, open our hearts, Father God, to your word this morning, Father God. We thank you in Jesus' name. Ooh. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? It's like a rapper, huh? PC, are you with me? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Those of you that are watching live, uh, um, if you've watched this before, you, you know I'm kind of crazy. It is. Look at verse 34 again, would you? Look at verse 34. Don't imagine, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Do you have any translation that you like there? Don't imagine that I came to bring peace on the earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. Now, there, there are a lot of people that reading this, and, and I'm not, I'm, I'm going to clarify this. This would make you a little bit unsettled as, as you read this and as you look at it and as you learn, even knowing that Christ Jesus is the Prince of Peace, proclaimed that I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. What he meant is that his coming would bring division. Everybody say division. <laughs> that because he came into this world to be our Savior, to redeem us of our sin, to forgive us of our sinful nature and wash us, cleanse us by his blood, that he was going to bring division in this world. Now how does that, how does that fit in to the Lord Jesus and his mission? To the earth. So I'm going to give you some things to think about, okay? Here's one that, that's up there. You need to understand this. The risen Savior, the risen Christ, 
brings division. The reason this happens is because when he left his throne in heaven and came to this earth to be the savior for mankind, he invaded enemy territory. If you read your Bible, you know that <laughs> Satan was cast down to this place. Satan was cast here as punishment. He was the, the most beautiful angel ever created. But pride, somehow the angels, before this encounter that took place that we don't even know exactly when, the angels must have had the ability to make choice. I don't know if that was a freedom of a will or a freedom of thinking or what it was, but they did. And Lucifer, who was the most beautiful angel created, he was the, this is why music is so powerful, he was the leader of worship yeah. in heaven. You want to know why music is so powerful in this world? There it is right there. He was the leader of worship in heaven, and he wanted to be like God, he wanted to be equal to God, and that brought judgment from God. God took him out of heaven and casted him, cast, casted it. Everybody does that with their English language. Cast him down to the earth, and the Bible says that one third of the angels in heaven followed him. So we have the enemy, Satan, who we give him a new name as the devil, who was Lucifer, and he's got a lot of demons, and who are they? Fallen angels. Yes, sir. So, Jesus came down as a child and all hell broke loose. <laughs> as soon as that child was birthed, war was declared. Actually, we could even say before, okay? Why? Because God came in the flesh and bone of a child and he invaded the enemy's territory. Now, some of you here, you grew up on one side of the tracks and you know that if you went to the other side of the track, you was in the wrong neighborhood. The evil one has, has so many people in the world bound under captivity. If you, if, you real, if you look at it, all through history, now, now let's think about what we were. We were bound by the enemy. Yes, sir. We were bound by chains of sin. Anybody agree with me on that? Yeah. Okay. We were bound like the Bible says we were enslaved yeah. to our sin. Now, if you, if you study this for a little bit, least I'll just give you a real quick, brief understanding. All throughout the history, wherever slavery has been done, when you, whether you look at it from Old Testament all the way through with Egypt, Israel, all the way through, even into our, our day and age, those who owned slaves were never willing to give up those that were held captive. Think if you can back to Moses. Remember when the Egyptians had Israel as slaves and the Jewish nation, the entire nation, millions of people were slaves. Moses is sent by God to go to Pharaoh and tell the Egyptians, let my people go. What? They were not willing to do such a thing. They did not want to lose what they were doing and that they had in freedom of the labor. Think about the old South. If you understand anything in history, the, the calling for freedom, that slavery was not of God, that it was not of God from the very beginning. But the response has always been the same. And nothing has changed. The devil does not want to let go of the people that he holds in bondage. How do we know? Because some of us aren't in that bondage anymore, but he still does everything he can to try and work his way in our lives. Come on. To hold on to us a little bit. Come on now. To keep his grip on us just a little bit. Say just a little bit. That's right. You know exactly what I'm talking about. The devil's the same way. When he has a person enslaved to sin, he fights like crazy. Yes, sir. When someone tries to, uh, to, to free that individual, when you reach out to try and help somebody to get out of their mess, and it, you'll go through it, he'll attack you and he'll attack them. Amen. Because he does not want to let go of anyone that he has been holding on to, captive. The devil enslaves people in sin. Most of us, if that's for me, I'm busy right now. <laughs> Most of us were slaves to the devil. Right. Some of us have testified we weren't just slaves. We were ranking officers. Yes, sir. There was probably a few people in here. You might have been a general. 
I don't know about four star, but we're just not going to talk about this morning, right? So when you think about how often the devil fights, when you think about his battle, when you think about that struggle, that is exactly why Christ came to this earth. He came here and, and, and everything was set on fire, if you would say. He came as a child, and even as a child, through Mary, through Joseph, and through that nation, the devil did everything he could to destroy. He tried to destroy all the children, had all the young boys killed under a certain age, did everything he could, put every kind of thought into the leadership mind of those days, the Egyptian people, those who ruled the world in the Roman nation, and he did what he did because that's his job. Christ came to save us. Amen. He came to deliver us. He came to free us from that captivity. Can somebody say amen? amen. And that, that's the reason why there, that Jesus himself said, I didn't come to bring peace like you're thinking peace. I came to bring a sword. I came to this earth to fight. To fight for your life. To fight for your soul. To fight for your future. To fight so that you don't have to live in that bondage. So that you don't have to live trapped to, to whatever it is that sin has trapped you. Whether it's, whether it's drugs, alcohol, uh, a life of hatred, uh, uh, whatever it might be, you don't have to be trapped. You, you, know, you know the truth, though. Come on. Sometimes when you're enslaved for so long, you enjoy yes, sir. slavery. Yes, sir. We enjoy the slavery in the sense that we are used to it. And this is why in the Old Testament you'll read that sometimes people who were enslaved, and it wasn't because of a nation or a culture or anything, it was because they, they got themselves messed up financially. And if you got messed up financially, you had, to, you had to be a slave to the person. Sometimes your family had to go and serve that household and be a slave to that family or whoever it was to pay off your debt. We're still enslaved today. Amen. They just got <laughs> different names on what we get enslaved to. Visa. MasterCard. Right? Just say amen. I, don't, I didn't get any amen. I got some more that. Right? right to, the, to the car dealership. To your Tio Nacho. I swore the car was in good shape. And it wasn't worth the $5,000. You're having a hard time giving him the rest of that money. So what happens when we look at it from that perspective, that Jesus came to this earth and he came to bring that kind of division? The battle itself of good and evil, the battle of Christ coming to this earth, the battle creates division in the world we live in. Amen. A division that is a natural output or a natural uh, byproduct, if you would, in the war for your soul, for your family's soul. Right. You pray for your family. You pray for your unsaved loved ones and people you care about, co-workers and friends. And then you wonder why things get rough. And you wonder why things get a little out of hand. And I don't know what happened. All hell is breaking loose. That's because you're declaring war. Just like Jesus did when he came to this earth. You're declaring war against those who are being held captive by the enemy. And that war brings problems. I don't know about you, but I remember when I first got saved. Whoo, man. It was all hell broke loose. Right. And I, I was 19 years old, man, and everything happened. I, there, I remember people that owed me money. Never would have wanted to pay me at all. But I got saved, and they wanted to pay me back. Wow. But now the money. <laughs> right? Just say amen. Quit letting your mind flutter off in some weird stuff, all right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Because some of us here, it happened to you. That's right. You gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you just thought it was going to be really great. Woo, this is going to be cool, man. I'm going to live for God, and I'm going to serve Him, and all of a sudden, all oh, hell breaks loose. Amen. Every battle that could ever come up came up into your home, into your family. That's why Jesus said, I came to bring at odds. Those things will bring at odds against them. Those things will bring division. They'll bring a little bit of a war into a family when one person gets saved. Yeah. There's some people 
that God is touching their heart, wanting to bring them, bring them closer to Him. But their battle is they're afraid of what their family would think. They're afraid of, I remember, I was a little fearful of what my mom would think, what my dad would think. If I told them, oh, I'm born again, I gave my life to the, hallelujahs. Hallelujah. Right, I remember hearing that? Yeah. Uh, but they'd always say something ahead of that. I just can't say it in church. You know, you know hallelujah. And, and you know exactly because some of you here can testify to the fact that you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and just stuff started happening. that wasn't, shoot, I'm going back to church, man. Forget that, man. I went to church one time, man. Boom, it blew up, man. I went to church one time and things got worse. Come on, come on. Wow. Anybody like that? Was that just my testimony? I started serving God and, oh, man, things got worse. Man. What do you mean? I, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my job. Are you here? Yes, sir. <laughs> wow. Lost my job. Got an eviction notice. Right. Why does it happen like this? Why is it that you give your life to Christ? You become born again. Your sins are forgiven. Isn't that awesome? Yes, sir. Your sins are forgiven. The, the, the Lord has... has Washed your past, forgiven your present, and has put his blood on your future. You're, you haven't even committed sins this, this week that's coming up or, or next year that's a few weeks down the line. And his blood is already covered there. Now, don't start taking notes like, ooh, let me, what am I missing? <laughs> the reality is when you're his child, he's going to watch over you and he's going to keep his blood on your life. Past, present, and future. Why is this war so hard? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because the devil hates freedom. Yes, he does. The devil hates freedom. Anyone who holds people in slavery, whether on this earth or in the supernatural, despises freedom. That's why when Jesus spoke of freedom, he spoke it in a way so that you and I would grasp how powerful it is. Some people, Christ comes into their life, sets them free, and they don't realize how awesome that freedom is. Before Christ, we were enslaved to our sin. We didn't even have a choice, but when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he forgives you of your sins. You're no longer a slave to the sin. But you know my mind is safe. Yeah, your mind's a safe. But your spirit, your, your soul is different. There's something in you now that you can, in your mind, and even make a decision. You know what? That's not, that's not what I want to do. You didn't have the power to do that before. Right. You didn't have the ability to do that before. The devil hates freedom. Look at your neighbor and say he hates freedom. He hates freedom. Why? Because there's power in that freedom. There's power in that freedom. Let me, let me, if I can, for a little bit here, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, about real freedom. Real freedom comes from relying on the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. Not rules and regulations but the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. If, if you. if you will obey and hear that voice that speaks inside of you that you know, like your conscience, is the Spirit of God, you won't have to have people constantly telling you, that's not good for you. I, I, I don't think that'll get you, that'll get you messed up. The Holy Spirit knows how to take care of us better than anybody else. Can you say amen? Now, I know that we need to learn like a baby, like a child who comes, who comes into this earth. We, we begin the, the process of helping them and guiding them and teaching them. But there's a lot of stuff that's already in that child. The Holy Spirit will guide you. And you will begin to see, by allowing the Holy Spirit to speak and listening to Him, you'll, be, you'll begin to see how, how incredibly amazing the changes that take place in your life. Now, thank God for the changes that may take overnight, but they don't all happen like that. Amen. Sometimes the changes take some process. Can you say amen? 
Sometimes they take some process. Let me give you a scripture. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 1. Talks to us about freedom. Say freedom. freedom. Freedom is the blessing of God. Freedom is the desire that the Lord Jesus has for us. Freedom in, in, in the scriptures we need to hear. We need to hear what the scripture is telling us. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Forgiveness plus life equals freedom. I don't know if you've ever looked at it that way, but the forgiveness of God plus life that he blesses us with equals freedom. As you start living for God and obeying his spirit, you start gaining this ability to look at your life and be thankful that you're not bound to that way of thinking, bound to those habits that were in your life, bound to the things that held you captive. Because freedom is power. <laughs> freedom is power. To, to the question that you might ask, what is God's will for my life? I'm going to tell you what His will for your life is. Freedom. Yes, sir. That you would walk in His freedom. That you would live. That's the answer. That's God's answer. That you would walk. That you would live. That you would obey. That you would operate under the freedom of God. It is what you have longed for and I have longed for all our life. We want to be free. Come on, you remember as a teenager, some of you. Are we getting teenagers in here? I don't want any teenagers to run away from home after I say this. But some of you remember, you remember when you were young, and you were rebellion, and you were telling your parents, when you were 13 years old, I'm going to leave. If your parents were really tough, they said, you, you go ahead. Where are you going? Oh, no, I'm going to leave. Okay, well, let's wait. Don't go until you know where you're going. You wanted freedom. You wanted a driver's license. Do you remember? Raise your hand if you remember that. You wanted a drive. Oh, my gosh. You guys, you guys must have ate too much last night. You remember freedom was that driver's license. At 15 and a half years old, man, you were in line to take that test and get that permit. Maybe not everybody, but I know I was. Anybody else like that? Why? Because it was freedom, man. It was freedom. And I only had a bike. Right. <laughs> we had a bike, man. But we wanted, we wanted to go say, hey, I got I got my permit. For what? For driving. What are you going to drive? My bike. I got the permit, which means I can. Right? We wanted that freedom. You know what's the hardest thing to take away from somebody as they get older? Freedom. When 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 I had my dad, my sisters and we're, were helping my dad little by little. We, we we had to keep my dad from from driving, and you know he had an accident uh, over here in Pico Rivera, and, and somebody got hurt. And um, it wasn't, wasn't a good thing. The insurance company didn't want to cover him. They wanted like they wanted like three thousand three hundred dollars a year. For insurance on him, and, and it was like, yeah, Dad, you know this and that. And I remember telling him, Dad, you, you ask me and I'll take you. And he would he would start the truck and take off. And so I used to go pull the coil off the off the uh, uh, yeah. And he, hey, 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 that. I'll, I'll fix it later, Dad. I'll fix it later. I was lying through my teeth, man. I had that coil in my pocket, man. I'd, I'd go out there after a while and start it moving. It's okay, now. You need to go anywhere. I'll take you. No, no, I'm fine. Park it again. Take that thing off. Do you, you know that my freedom is so powerful? My dad made five sets of keys to his truck. My sister passed and my nephew, Chris, her son has the truck right now. And I told him, just in case, so you'll know, I have four sets of keys to that truck. And he's still the truck. Four sets of keys. That's how powerful freedom is. People lose that freedom. And it, ooh, man. It, 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 it becomes a struggle. Freedom is a powerful thing. Because freedom has power. There is power in that freedom. Are you listening to me? Okay, I say that to you because that's, that's what God has called us to understand. That is what we have longed for. That is what is now ours as believers, as followers of Christ. But here's the reality. Freedom can also be kind of scary. 
One, one ministry. Uh, he's an author, writes books too, Robert, Robert Capone. I don't know if he's Italian. <laughs> he's got like a mafia name, Capone. <laughs> but he made this point. He said, one of the problems with any authentic pronouncement of the gospel is that it introduces us to freedom. <clears throat> when you share Christ yes. with someone, one of the battles that that person will have is the freedom that you're talking about. When you share about what God has done in your life Amen. and how freedom has impacted your life, that's, that's a scary thing. That's why when people see you and you share with them, no, man, I'm, I'm going to church, I'm born again, I'm, I'm living for God, they kind of look at you like, I don't know about that. And, and, and for those of you that, that have ever in the past had some slip-ups and some fallbacks, you'll have those same people say, I knew it, man. I knew you were just a big, fat liar. Right? Right? So here's a good question to ask. Now that you're free, look at your neighbor say, now that you're free. You ain't free. What will you do? What will you do with that newfound freedom that you've got, my brothers and sisters? How are you going to respond now that you know how powerful, how incredibly awesome the freedom of God is in our lives? Woo! We live in a, in a time where you'll hear terms like legalism. Sometimes Christians will, will make certain statements, you know, oh no, that's, that's legalism. Not everything is legalism. <laughs> Some things you might have a conviction for. Amen. Okay? You know, I, I remember all, out of the blue, I don't know if it was really out of the blue, I, I shared this with you when all of a sudden my pastor just, yeah, I think he got these, maybe he did one of those um, uh, studies on his, uh, who he's related to or where his background came from, found out he had a little bit of Jewish in him or somebody. He went, he's quitting in court. Wow. Yeah, just quitting in court. Every now and then, he'd slip. Man. Yeah, and one of the brothers made some carnitas. There was one brother that really, that really made good carnitas. And if he made carnitas, you know, my pastor would, would I'll, I'll, have, I'll have one. True, he, he had like six. But he quit eating pork. And he didn't, he didn't tell people that it was doctrine. Sure, if we read the Old Testament... The Jews were not allowed to eat pork. He didn't do it. He, he, used, he said, that's my conviction. This is my conviction. Right. I remember we used, we used to ask him, so is, is, is drinking a beer wrong? And, and he would go, what, what was your bondage? Well, getting high. So would you drink a beer to get high? Or just to have a beer? <coughs> but see, when, when, when I got saved, we used to drive around the church van drinking near beer. <laughs> Y'all think I was a saint when I got saved. I'm 19 years old. Any of you remember what you were like when you were 19 years old? I was 19 years old. So, 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 what about people that use the term legalism? Not everything is legalism. There's some. There's some. There's some churches. That if you if you go to those churches, they're not crazy about women wearing pants. Right. Mm -hmm. If 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 they use it as a doctrine, if they use it, oh, well, it's because you know you know the Bible says, and oh, you know that 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 can be legalism. Men can't be in the church without a tie. <laughs> if George Zola is watching us this morning, we want to say hi to Brother Joe. <laughs> we love you, bro. We love those ties. We're going to send you some. But that could be, I know I'm about to apologize to him, but that could be, that could be legalism. Let me, let me, let me try and, let me try and clarify some things for you. Legalism is something that exists. Legalism doesn't think that you will handle anything in your life very well. So because you won't handle it very well, legalism has this fear that you're going to go butt wild. And because you can't handle it, we need to make a rule of this. And here's the legalism. Legalism can control your life because you can't control your life. But see, Jesus said, I came that you might have freedom. 
and that you might be free. Well, 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 what if that person just goes back into the world? Maybe they didn't step into this side in the first place. Because you all know that you can do a lot of things when you're in trouble. Man. Right? Anybody who's ever been busted prayed. <laughs> Anyone who's ever gotten in trouble with the law has prayed. And if you knew anything about Jesus, you said the sinner's prayer once or twice or three or four or five times. But that prayer doesn't change you. Right. It's the heart that changes you. So you can pray all the prayers that you want, but if something doesn't transform on the inside of you by accepting Christ as Savior and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you, yeah, you might need legalism. You might need to say, no, nah, you know what, I, I, I stay away from that because I know what I was. Amen. Because I know where God touched me and where he pulled what he pulled me out of. And I don't want my life to reflect that. I want that to be a reflection of where God pulled me away. Are you listening to me? So what happens is subtly, and not so subtly, legalism starts putting the message on your freedom that you can't handle freedom. And because you can't handle freedom, you can't enjoy freedom. And you can't live in freedom. And you're stuck where you're at. And God has been trying to get people unstuck. Unstuck. You know, when I got saved, we used to do, we used to do incredible things. We... We used to pull cigarettes out of people's pocket and bound with the devil there. Stop going to stop on, stop on. All over the place, man, like crazy. And and as soon as church was over, they they go out and they just buy another pack of cigarettes. <laughs> what happened? Nice. Only Jesus on, can set you free. We were trying to help. <laughs> We aren't helping very much. Because for you to get free, you gotta go to Christ. You gotta go to Christ. You gotta come to Jesus for that freedom. And if you don't, then the enemy lies to you and says, No, you know what? You can't handle freedom, so you can't even serve God. Wow. Don't even try and serve God. You can't. Wow. Because that freedom is just that freedom, you 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 know you look in the mirror, you know you, and the devil keeps us from being everything God has called us to be. Man. Legalism is anything that man does through human effort to try and earn God's love and his acceptance. You, you fast for 14 days if you want. That doesn't make you any better than anybody right. else. Come on. You can quit eating pork and quit eating meat. You can quit eating food. You'll get skinny. You might not look that good. But it doesn't make you any closer to God. All right. Pastor, I believe people ought to pray for three hours. You pray for three hours? Come on. Well, yeah, I do. Well, then you keep praying for three Man. hours. Because your three-hour prayer doesn't do any, put you any closer to God than that person's ten minutes when they were praying. God is no respecter of persons. You can't score points with the Redeemer. Come on. Come on, somebody. You can't score points with your Savior. He saved you. He knows you. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap. He knows everything about you. And he knows your strengths. You like that move right there? Yes, he does. I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape right here. Move it, don't get that air. So let me close with this. There's no way you can earn righteousness. Amen. It's impossible. Tell your neighbor it's impossible. The only thing that you get if you try to earn it is condemnation. Yes. If you try to earn God's goodness, forgiveness, and blessing on your life, you'll get condemnation. And, and, and the first person that's going to condemn you is you yourself. Amen. But if you'll let Jesus and the freedom he has for you, if you'll let that work in <laughs> your life, freedom is God's goal for us. Through faith in Christ, we're escaping the system. We're not under the law. Christ fulfilled the law. Amen. He brought a completion to the law. We are under grace. We've been set. Free. Free. We've been set. Free. We've been set. Free. Free. Church, free. 
free. Free to live for Him. Free to be what God called us to be. Free to do what He's called us to do. Not to live in everything trying to figure out, oh my God, did I sin? You sin when you woke up. You sin when you were born. Yes, in this flesh. We are sinners. Amen. But in this spirit, yes, sir. but in this heart, we have been set free. Yes. And that freedom, that freedom means that, that freedom means power. That freedom means you now have the ability to walk in the fullness of God. That is his goal. Freedom is God's goal for us. He's equipped you to handle it. Handle it. Handle it. Man. Handle that freedom. Why? Because that's probably what will bring people to Christ. Man. Most people look at you and they think you're living this holy life. Mm -hmm. Come on, you're all some people. <laughs> oh, that brother, he goes to church. He's better than us. No, you're not. That's right. Come on. You're not better than anybody. Right. You may have disciplined your mouth not to speak it. Your mind still thinks it. Oh, come on. You still hear that joke. You already know the punchline. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I going too far? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Live in that freedom. Don't go rebuking yourself. You laugh at somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. That's filthy. I'm so filthy. You're about to sinner. You foul, wicked, ungodly sinners. I'm still trying not to laugh. <laughs> quit, quit. Quit walking in that legalism because your family will never get saved. Right. Your friends will never come to Christ if they think you're living this halo. I almost sounded like it right now, didn't I? Like a little Beyonce commercial right there. Check in your halo at the door because you're not allowed in here. Let's stand to our feet this morning all across this building, would you? So, Pastor, what do you summarize this for us? All right, let me summarize this for you. I want you to begin to live in freedom, relying on the Holy Spirit that's in you. Oh, you don't need to call everybody on the phone. Is this right? Yeah. You know what's right. right. He lives in you. You know what's right. <laughs> you know why you're calling? Because you're calling. Maybe you, maybe you can get away with it. Let me call somebody. I'm not sure. Yes, you are sure. Yes, sir. Well, what does the scripture say? What's it feel like right here? Yes. Well, I should. Then don't. That's how the Holy Spirit works inside. I don't need no rules and regulations. Badges. I don't need no stinky badges. You got everything you need in your life to guide you, to keep you, to hold you. To give, your, to give your life power. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Not on every little behavior going on in your life. And I'm like, I crushed some A's. You're going to crush a lot of A's. Amen. Think you're walking on shells? Don't walk with Christ like you're walking Amen. on shells. Just acknowledge you're just as broken as anybody else. But you know how to stay close to the cross. I know how to stay close and connected to the forgiveness of God. I'm covered by his precious, precious and powerful blood. If you live like that, you'll see some incredible changes that will take place in your life. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Just a, just, a, uh, just a time of prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. We don't often dive into the understandings of your truth. Your truth is deeper than this little message brought this morning, God. But we, we desperately need to see our families saved. Our brothers and sisters, our aunts and our uncles, our cousins, our moms and our dads, and the people we know at school and on the job. And, and we know, Lord, we know that if we're not real and we don't walk in that freedom, then that light doesn't shine as bright inside of our lives. Lord, we need you. We need you. This morning, we need a push and a challenge that we, that we learn to walk in that grace, the 
power of your freedom. Desire this, Lord Jesus. If you're here this morning and you're not born again, then, then you've heard probably the best gospel message that you could ever hear. Jesus wants to set you free. Before any of us ever came to Christ, we were in bondage to the things of our old life, of our past, of our, of our upbringing, and the broken things in our lives, and the broken families that we come from. And some of us, yes, even our DNA works against us. Even the dysfunctional relationships that we grew up with works against us. But Jesus can still bring freedom to your life. If you're, if you're tired of walking and wondering whether you're okay, whether, whether am I good, am I good with God, if you don't know, then you're not. Because if Christ lived in you, the Holy Spirit would bear witness in you and you would say, yeah, I am. I'm under, I'm under His blood. I've been washed by the precious blood that Jesus Drip one, just one drop of his blood that dropped down to the floor it was all that is needed to forgive all of mankind. Forgiveness is missing from your life. And we'd like to pray for you. Yes. We'd like to pray for you. Before we leave this place, would you lift your hand and say, you know what, Pastor Phil, pray for me. I, 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 I feel the need in my life for forgiveness. You don't need to confess to anybody. You just need to pray. You just need to ask your Heavenly Father. He'll do that. Just lift your hands and ask me. I need, I need that in my life. God bless you. God sees that. God sees it. You can put them down. If you lift it up, that's all that matters. That's, 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 that's acknowledgement. That, that's, like being, that's like being at an auction. Your hand goes up, boom. Already marked down. Let me ask this question to those of you brothers and sisters. How many of you have not been walking in that freedom that the Lord Jesus Christ has taught? See, when you're not in that freedom, then all those little battles that come up, friends, families, jobs, peoples, all those little battles, they drive you crazy. Because you don't realize that the freedom of God and the peace of God is battling against the things that are all around you. Maybe you're not walking in that freedom. And God is challenging you this morning. You don't need rules and regulations. Sometimes we need certain guardrails up just to protect us. That's called the Word of God. If you read your Word, you'll get all the guardrails that you need in your life. You know, they put those, they put those rails on the mountain roads if you go up into the mountains. They don't put those rails up there because we're stupid. They put them up there because there's accidents that happen. That's, that's, that's why there's forgiveness. That's why there's forgiveness, because there's accidents that can happen. I'm going to open up the altar. You don't have to raise your hand. But if there's some battles going on in your life right now with freedom and with the peace of God, you need to come. You need to bring it to the Lord Jesus. You need to let Him help you because He is your answer. He is your answer. Can you say amen? Let's worship and let's come. We'll pray for you before you go home today.
Come on, give him a praise, God. Do it like you're free. Praise him like you thank you for that freedom. That freedom's real. That freedom is yours. Gracious keeper, worthy. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all honor. Christ has set us free. There should, be, there should be more joy in the life of a believer who has been set free than somebody who walks around buzzed all the time. We need to learn how to enjoy that freedom. It's good freedom. Not bound, not, not being bound to anything. Chains. Remember that song we sing? Chains have been broken. Freedom has been given to us. Father, I proclaim a, a blessing on your congregation, on your people, Father. In your, in your incredible way of, of your Holy Spirit moving and ministering, challenging us and awakening us. Help us to not just live, but help us to walk in that freedom. Help us to speak in that freedom. Help us to do all that you challenge us to do in understanding that freedom that has set us free. I speak a blessing over these lives, and I ask the Lord to touch them and encourage them to let that light shine in the darkness of this world. I ask this in Jesus' name, and everybody say, come on, give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn around, show yourself friendly, smile at somebody. Don't forget the announcements of this week and the things that are...